Thank you. And before we move to the next item of business, members will wish to join me in welcoming to our gallery uh, the Right Honourable David Carter MP, Speaker of the New Zealand House of Representatives. Thank you. And we now come to topical questions. Topical question number one from Mark Ruskell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I declare an interest as a councillor in Stirling? And can I ask the Scottish Government how it plans to support local authority action to reduce air pollution? Cabinet Secretary Rosanna Cunningham. The Scottish Government is already working closely with local authorities as they implement their air quality action plans, providing both practical and financial assistance. An additional £1 million to support this important work is being provided in 2017-18. Mark Roscoe. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response? Clearly, finance is important. This is a public health crisis. There are 3,500 people in Scotland dying every single year because of these air quality problems. But will the Government commit to providing funding specifically for low emission zones? I'm sure the member doesn't want me as the Cabinet Secretary to tie local government's hands when uh, we give funding over. Uh, he will be well aware that there is a considerable debate uh, about that. The funding that currently exists um, uh, allows them uh, a million pounds uh, for action plan measures, half a million pounds for monitoring, half a million pounds for roadside emissions testing, and a million pounds to support wider air quality resources. Uh, that has been added to by a further million pounds in the 2017-18 budget. Um, developing low emission zones uh, is uh, something which is already a matter for discussion within government uh, and will uh, require local authorities to come forward with their own ideas in respect of it. At that point, uh, I would uh, consider what might or might not be required at what stage in order to deliver a low emission zone. There are a number of components of any financing of that, as the member probably is well aware. Mark Russell. Cabinet Secretary for that further response. I, mean, I hope we can get some clarity on the exact package of low emission zones. But in addition to the 38 areas which breached air quality limits, there are also many other areas where uh, particularly NOx emissions and particulate emissions are creeping up. We know there's good evidence on 20 mile an hour speed limits that they can significantly reduce air pollution from diesel vehicles. So will the government also consider a default 20 mile an hour speed limit across Scotland's residential areas, which would be significantly cheaper for councils to roll out than the current piecemeal approach to 20 mile an hour zones? Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, if I could make a, a few comments about low emission zones. I mean, first of all, uh, uh, we expect there to be an initial low emission zone in place by the end of 2018. Uh, and that is what we are working uh, towards. Uh, a, a great deal of water has to go under that particular bridge before it's in place. Um, and it will be interesting to see how many of the campaign commitments that get made in the coming April, May campaign uh, relate to uh, potential bids to be the location for a low emission zone. Um, uh, on the, on the uh, uh, secondary question of the specifics about uh, um, uh, 20 mile per hour, uh, uh, zones. Uh, I'm sure the uh, member is perfectly well aware uh, that I would be not within uh, my portfolio remit if I started indicating for somebody else's portfolio what detailed policies they should uh, bring forward. And uh, it may be that he will wish to raise this again on Thursday after the statement uh, in terms of the climate change plan. Morris Golden. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. My constituents in Johnston and Renfrew will have been alarmed to read that their town is one of the worst places in Scotland for air pollution, according to Friends of the Earth Scotland. Parents especially will be worried about the harm this may cause their children. Unfortunately, there are only 10 air quality monitors, half of which are broken, available to share between every school in Scotland. Will the Cabinet Secretary consider extending access to air quality monitors for Scotland schools? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I'll have a look at that specifically uh, um, and get back to the member on the very particular question that he's, uh, uh, he's asking about. Um, uh, I know there are monitoring units in a number of different places uh, and in respect specifically of schools, I'll check uh, uh, where we are with that. I mean, obviously, local authorities are 
doing a great deal uh, across Scotland to try and help the situation. Um, it, it is local authorities who have the statutory uh, um, uh, obligation to regularly review air quality in their areas um, and to bring forward plans to deal with that. Um, so as well as raising this issue within this chamber, I hope he's also raising it directly with the local authority concerned. Question number two, Edward Mountain. To ask the Scottish Government whether the Scottish Ambulance Service is meeting its response time targets in rural areas. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Oh, well, I know that the <coughs> provision of ambulance services in the Highlands and Islands is a matter of concern to the member and uh, his constituents. I understand that uh, the member will be meeting with senior Scottish Ambulance Service managers soon to discuss uh, these concerns. In 2015-16, the ambulance service reached 65.5% of its category calls within the eight-minute target against a, a steadily increasing patient demand. That doesn't mean that other patients face long and extensive delays. Despite the increased demand, ambulance service crews are saving the lives of more patients than ever before. The average response times for potentially life-threatening calls remains at around 7.4 minutes. And while time targets are clearly important, they don't in themselves measure the quality of patient care or patient outcomes, neither do they take account of advances made in clinical development of pre-hospital care in recent years. And that's why the Scottish Ambulance Service is piloting a new response model announced in November last year. The model has been developed following the most extensive uh, clinical review of its type ever undertaken in the UK, with nearly half a million call-outs examined. This will benefit patients in urban, rural and remote communities in Scotland. The Scottish Government and the Scottish Ambulance Service are both committed to ensuring patients across Scotland receive the best care possible and that's why we've invested an extra £11.4 million in the Scottish Ambulance Service for 2016-17 which will include the recruitment of 200 extra paramedics as part of our commitment to training a, a thousand more paramedics over the next five years. The funding will help to improve care across Scotland including in some of our most remote and rural communities. Edward Mountain. <coughs> I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Although it doesn't resolve all the problems, I'd just like to remind the Cabinet Secretary on the 24th of November, I raised the issue with the First Minister of her mum who went through labour in an ambulance on the way from Caithness General to Ragmore Hospital. Both Ailey and I were promised a report on that and we still await that. On Christmas Eve, I raised the issue with the Cabinet Secretary of Thomas, a young child who waited over 10 hours for an ambulance from Caithness General to Raig Moore. I've received an acknowledgement but no detailed response. Today, on the 17th January, I want to raise the issue of two mums who had to travel from Raig Moore in labour in horrendous condition. In one case, the snow gates were closed, which meant that two attempts were needed to get her to Raig Moore in a private 4x4 before she got through. What is clear to me and the people of Caithness, I believe, is that NHS Highland management model for Caithness Hospital is not working. Will she join me, therefore, and the latest convert to the cause, which I'm delighted to welcome, Gail Ross, with asking for a full management review of hospital pr provision in Caithness and an ambulance provision to support that before this whole situation spirals further out of control? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I first of all uh, ask uh, Edward Mountain to um, ensure that the, the detail of any uh, individual uh, patients that he's raised are uh, uh, sent on to my office and of course I think the senior managers that would be that he's meeting with would be uh, keen to uh, discuss with him any individual patient issues it's important to get to the bottom of any individual patient cases that have been raised uh, in relation though to uh, Keith Ness uh, I'm obviously a, a very aware uh, of uh, the fact that NHS Highland um, has taken the very difficult decision uh, to make the changes to obstetric maternity services at the, the hospital. And of course, the Chief Medical Officer has kept in close uh, touch with uh, the, the progress being uh, made. Obviously, as the member knows, that decision was made on patient safety uh, grounds. Uh, and although um, there uh, is no consultation on the issue because of the decision being taken on patient safety grounds. I have made clear that it's very important 
to keep local people in touch, uh, to allow them to contribute to some of the discussions around the need to strengthen services, not just uh, uh, within the Scottish Ambulance Service, but on, uh, in Ragmore as a receiving hospital for uh, those cases. It's very important that we deliver safe and high quality services to pregnant women and newborn babies in Scotland, and that when adverse events happen, that we reflect and learn the lessons to ensure that they're never repeated. We want to make sure that um, all women receive the best services. That's why we initiated a review of maternity and neonatal services across Scotland, which now has reported uh, to me and uh, will be published shortly. I would expect managers within uh, NHS Highland to ensure that the services they deliver for any uh, women and, uh, and newborn babies across any area of uh, the Highlands, uh, that they're in line with the, uh, the outcomes and the recommendations of the, the Maternity and Neonatal Services report. And I will make sure that Highland uh, follow up on that under the guidance of the Chief Medical Officer. There's time for some uh, additional brief supplementaries. Mr Mountain, do you want another supplementary? I, I think, uh, Presiding Officer, thank you. The supplementary, I, I, I guess, for Keith Ness is how, how services in Caithness can ever equate to the rest of Scotland, where immediately you have a 100-mile trip under blue lights for mums who are in labour uh, to get to Raig Moor, especially in conditions where there are snow gates closed and inability for helicopters to get there. So I, I don't understand how the, the Cabinet Secretary believes that it will be the same for the rest of Scotland when Caithness is very different by its very remoteness. Perhaps she could answer that. Cabinet Secretary. Well, well first of all, um, I'm sure the member will appreciate that if a report uh, after an adverse incident says that a service is not safe, that is not something that anybody can ignore, whether that's me as the Cabinet Secretary for Health or indeed uh, managers within NHS Highland, that would be uh, extremely irresponsible of them to have ignored a report that, that uh, said that that uh, service uh, was not a safe service. Now, if you look across the, the, the Highland, there are uh, many uh, services that are, are midwife-led uh, services that are, again, um, being delivered in remote and rural areas. What's important is the infrastructure and the protocols are there to ensure uh, that the Scottish Ambulance Service uh, is uh, res responding in the way that it needs to, to ensure safe uh, transfer of, of, uh, of women and that that should happen at the right time and early enough. But importantly, that the receiving hospital, in this case, Ragmore, has the facilities there um, to ensure that women and their families are catered for in a, a, a comfortable uh, and welcoming environment. And he will be aware, I'm sure, because he'll have had uh, a, a, a quite a great deal of, of local briefing around this, that a lot of work is underway to ensure that that happens. I can assure the member I'm keeping a very close eye on the situation in Minister, Highland there, and in Caithness, as Minister. is the Chief Medical Officer. Three more questions. Marie Todd, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'd like to ask what there are the range of options available to the Scottish Ambulance Service um, when faced with adverse weather conditions? Cabinet Secretary. Well, adverse incident calls are assessed, and if access to uh, a remote patient is identified, then the service will assess their capabilities to respond, either through their SORT team, um, uh, those who undertake specialist training to drive off-road, or indeed the air ambulance services. If that's not possible due to availability of resource or severe weather conditions, then the ambulance service would seek assistance from partner organisations, whether that's the MOD or HM uh, Coast Guard aircraft. Um, and in certain uh, circumstances, a vehicle such as the Polaris may be requested by a partner organisation such as Police Scotland. Rudy Grand. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, it's very difficult to, risk, uh, to um, argue with patient safety and the reason for changing the way a service is delivered, but I have asked NHS Highland, and I will ask the Cabinet Secretary today, what risk assessment has been undertaken of the alternative of taking women down in labour um, to Inverness when the appropriate vehicles are not available to take them? 
NHS Highland has no locus over the Scottish Ambulance Service, but the Cabinet Secretary has. Will she take steps today to make sure there is adequate provision in Caithness to take um, women in labour down to Inverness on an ambulance or indeed by helicopter, but certainly not on the back of a vehicle when snow gates are closed? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, first of all, can I say I, I welcome the fact that Rhoda Grant um, uh, recognises the, the, the patient safety issues raised uh, um, about the service at Caithness General, which left um, senior managers within NHS Highland with a very difficult decision uh, to, ma to make, and it wasn't one uh, taken lightly, I, I can assure her. I have made it very, very clear that the expectations around the service um, delivery to expectant uh, uh, women, uh, pregnant women and, in fact, their newborn babies uh, in Highland uh, relies as much on the Scottish Ambulance Service response as it does on NHS Highland. I can assure her that there has been very close working and collaboration between the Scottish Ambulance Service and NHS Highland and that, in fact, I have asked for uh, regular updates uh, from both organisations to ensure sure that they're working together to make sure that not just the safe transfer of women and, uh, and in fact any other patients requiring transfer takes place, uh, but that indeed um, the receiving hospital, Ragmore, has the facilities that are, uh, that are there in, in quality for not just the women but their families as well. Very happy to keep Rhoda Grant and indeed any other member uh, updated on that, but I can assure her that the role of the Scottish Ambulance Service there is, is critical. And as succinctly as possible, Richard Lockett. The Cabinet Secretary may be aware that one fact that was influencing response times in Murray was the use of emergency vehicles for inter-hospital transfers between Dr Grays and Elgin and ARI in Aberdeen, which is now thankfully being addressed by a new post to coordinate better use of the emergency vehicles and non-emergency vehicles so that the emergency vehicles are available to answer 999 calls. Would the Cabinet Secretary be willing to ensure her officials closely monitor the progress uh, of that change to ensure it is being effective and to see if any further intervention is required. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I am happy to uh, agree to do that. The Scottish Ambulance Service has a, an urgent tier vehicle based in Elgin, which can be used to safely transfer patients who don't need a, an a &E ambulance. And as uh, the, the member has just uh, alluded to, the service has also recently invested and deployed to specialist paramedics in Elgin. They cover Elgin and the surrounding area and provide an enhanced response for patients. The service is able to now manage a range of clinical needs in the area, and this includes treating patients at home, referring patients, or conveying patients to hospital. And uh, I am certainly happy to keep Richard Lockhead uh, in Informed of the development of that service. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. We'll now move on to a debate in the name of Mike Russell, and we'll just take two seconds to change seats.